Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm here with David Floyer. We're at EMC World 2015, live. Two cubes here in Las Vegas. Boaz Palgi is here, he's the Vice President and General Manager of Scale.io at EMC. Boaz, great to see you again. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you, well, So happy big day to be for you today. Again. We had, uh, you, this keynote day was uh, Emerging Technologies, day three, and a lot of talk about Scale.io. Saw a great demo from, from Chad. You must be really super excited. Absolutely, yeah. it's uh, Congratulations, give us the you. update. So what we, uh, the two main things we, we have been uh, um, announcing uh, this week are the VX Rec uh, by uh, VCE, uh, enabling customers to consume Scale.io not just as a software uh, product, but also as an integrated uh, converged infrastructure appliance form factor. And the other big news, of course, is the availability of uh, Scale.io software um, in a completely free and frictionless uh, manner for testing uh, purposes, for non-production uh, test purposes. Yeah, that was announced uh, this morning. Yes. That, uh, anybody can download now the, the software. And, um, so maybe we can back up and help our, I mean, we've talked about this before in theCUBE, but help our audience understand sort of the concept behind Scale.io. So, um, if you look at the raison d'etre of the SAN technology today, you need to go back 25 years and look at what the resources were available at the application server at that time. So servers at that time had uh, just enough resources to run a single application. So if your server would go down or your internal disk holding your data would go down, you would lose everything. So people wanted to create some, some application that would take care of resilience and, and uh, high availability of the data, but they couldn't run it on the same server because the single application on the server took all the resources. So what they had to do was take a separate server, a new server, put some additional disks in there, and run a single application there that managed the data. So that server, that storage server, actually grew into what happens to be a $50 billion SAN industry today. It's a big, big, big bad. industry, <laughs> but it, not too bad, exactly, but it's a workaround. And so, uh, if you look at any server rolling off the production line today, um, even the, the low-cost servers have ample resources in terms of CPU, memory, uh, local capacity and magnetic and flash network. Um, so, you can today run a product like Scale.io, which is an enterprise class, uh, and a storage system is just another software alongside your applications, databases, or hypervisors on your servers, and thus eliminate the, the pain, really, of running multiple layers uh, that you had to do as a workaround in the past. Okay, so that sounds good. Um, what's the challenge, what's the trade-off of that? You've got to be able to recover, you have to be able to to, to support you know, enterprise class availability. How do you solve that problem? So, so Dave, as you know, our team has been working together in, in this industry for 15 years and we have been building storage uh, software products uh, a few times, both in startup companies and in, uh, in incumbent uh, vendors. And so um, the, the unbelievable unique of Scala is that not only don't you really have a trade-off here, but actually because of the architecture that is a scale-out architecture that parallelizes your IOs, you not only aggregate the capacity across all the nodes, but you also linearly scale performance. So Scale.io really enables you today to get the highest performance storage system in the market today. And actually, if you saw the VX Rec uh, announcement uh, by VCE earlier this week, uh, they showed a thousand uh, node environments where you are where you get 38 petabytes but also 240 million IOPS out of a scale system so apart from that you get all the 
all the basic enterprise uh, uh, functionality, advanced fun functionality that you can expect from enterprise class system, snapshots, uh, theme provisioning, uh, all kinds of uh, advanced, uh, other advanced functionality, management, uh, APIs uh, to other management systems, etc. David, I know you've been a big fan of this architecture. Yes, I have, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, yes, I, I've written uh, uh, quite a lot about uh, uh, what I call service and it's now called uh, hyper, hyper, hyper converged uh, uh, architectures. And um, uh, when we first created our company together, we were doing forecasting on the SAN itself yes. and why it was good, why it, it helped to uh, release stranded assets. Uh, the very good business case that SANS had in those days, um, um, and they grew very, very fast indeed. And it strikes me that ServiceSAN, putting it together, actually makes that whole system so much simpler because you're combining everything together. So our forecasts are actually very, very positive on ServiceSAN. Yes. Uh, because it's a more efficient, uh, lower cost solution. Is, is that is? Are you seeing that you are going to be the the, the savior, if you like, of the old sand business? Well, I, I, I don't want to call it the savior, but I, I definitely think that when you look at this space um, and you look at the challenges that customers have to deploy a product like this, I definitely believe Scale.io is the front runner by far, with a very long gap behind us to the rest of the field, and the reasons are, uh, are uh, three or four fold. So first of all, we talked about scale. So modern data centers today, after all the consolidation uh, that we have seen over the last few years of data centers in the enterprises or in the SMB into hosting and service providers, are running hundreds of thousands, if not millions of servers, which is very different from the traditional data centers that, that, that we all grew up on with a few tens or a few hundreds of servers. So the capability of being able to run at scale, at true scale, is uh, paramount. And obviously Scale.io, the name says it, the core uh, capability that we put as one of the design uh, capabilities of Scale.io uh, scale is we are able to scale the product from three nodes to many, many thousands of uh, nodes. The second thing relates to the elasticity. So when you run these kind of environments, you cannot tell the customer what to do with his hardware. The customer needs to be able to add and to move and to remove servers whenever he wants to, as uh, whenever he feels like it in a completely liquid manner. Um, he also should be able to have any configuration, so he cannot be forced into symmetric nodes. He must be able to have nodes with uh, different types of CPU and other configurations, number of disk, type of disk, speed of disk, etc. Uh, and Scaleo enables that uh, as well. Then uh, the whole issue that Dave brought up of enterprise advanced functionality. You need to be able to provide the customer the, all the enterprise functionalities that the customer expects from an enterprise class system and in a very robust manner. So one of the feedbacks that we are getting from our customers is that they are not able to break this product. And now that we put the product out there free for download, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if people are able to, uh, to, to, to break it, obviously within uh, uh, the limits of using the hardware in the configuration that, uh, that, uh, that works. Now I but presume you're seeing demand from service provider space. Well, maybe Definitely. talk about where demand's coming from. I mean, Verizon was up on stage today. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. So, so, so we see two main use cases uh, in the market. One is virtual server infrastructure. So this is indeed server providers with their public uh, clouds and infrastructure as a service, but also enterprises with private clouds. And we see transactional databases, so SAP HANA, uh, Oracle, Oracle Rack, SQL, etc., uh, MongoDB. Um, and so we, uh, we see those type of uh, uh, use cases uh, taking off because customers in those environments uh, really are uh, looking to lower their TCO but also improve their performance and their operational flexibility and elasticity. Now the other important thing is that it's easy to say, hey, let's move our technology overnight to a hyper-converged. Uh, when you look, however, in these large organizations, it's easy to make a technology swap, 
but it's not that easy to make an organizational swap overnight. And here is another unique capability of uh, Scalio's architecture, is that we enable the customer to actually make this transformation at his own pace. So he can start in a, what we call a two-layer architecture, where one layer of servers runs the applications and the compute, and the other layer of the same type of commodity application servers runs the storage with Scale.io. At this time, you don't need to make any organizational changes. And then over time, when the application guys need more compute, they can just run the applications or the hypervisors or the databases on those servers that are originally just running the storage, turning that layer into a hyperconverged layer. And similarly, when the storage guys need more capacity, they can just put Scalio data server software on the application layers and, 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 and turn that layer into a hyperconverged layer running compute and storage as well. And so that transformation from three layer traditional R, uh, data centers to two layers compute and storage to ultimately a hyperconverged uh, infrastructure without ever having to do any data, data migrations, without ever, ever having to interrupt users' uh, uh, I/O operations is where Scalio again is truly unique. So, w one of the things we're also seeing, obviously, at uh, EMC, is the great success of Extreme I/O, and I've been talking to a whole number of customers who are planning now to go to uh, flash-only uh, yes. uh, 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 data centers. Uh, something that would never have even been considered just literally a year ago. Yes. And, and working to it very, very hard indeed. How do you see your product in that area? They've had to put very specialized things into Extreme IO to make it effective as a scale out architecture, et cetera. How, uh, how are you planning to go into that world and how are you uh, offering different uh, opportunities for customers in that, in that new world of flash only? So, so first of all, we are agnostic to the underlying media. So Scaleo today works with a flash, whether it's SSDs or PCIe cards of the customer's choice, as well as, as, well as with magnetic uh, disks, uh, SATA, SAS, etc. cetera. Um, obviously, Extreme IO and Scaleo have two very different design uh, uh, prerogatives. So Extreme IO is a capacity optimized solution with a, with a fine granularity IO layout uh, uh, and completely uh, optimized for the best capacity. And obviously applications that do that are well dedupable like VDI, etc., have uh, the best results in an Extreme IO environment. Scale IO has a different layout, which is a, a mid uh, granularity uh, layout and we are optimized for performance. Um, so uh, capacity optimization and performance are almost each other's opti uh, opposites because in order to get capacity optimization you need to do all kinds of redirections, etc., which inherently hit performance. And if you have a performance optimized uh, layout like Scale.io, you don't get capacity optimization. You do get your cost savings by your ability to buy the media of your choice. You can go and buy SSDs or flash card, uh, PCIe flash cards from whatever vendor you want and you can play them off against some, the, each other and get the best price quality flash that you want in a scalar environment. The, the pendulum is swinging to a software defined world. Uh, Boaz, thanks very much for, for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the update, the insights. Congratulations on all the progress and uh, good luck in the future. Yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, it's been a pleasure as always. Uh, pleasure is ours. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from Las Vegas, EMC World 2015. We'll be right back.